Bon, bon, bonjour à tous. Euh, donc, bienvenue à cette première conférence du GCM de, de l'année. Euh, donc, il y a peut-être des gens qui sont en, en connexion euh, un, un peu partout euh, à travers le, le réseau du euh, QMP. So today, the, uh, the, art, the, the short talk at the beginning from uh, one person in my group and then the, the, uh, the invite of the speaker that I will present after that. So the, 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 the first talk, very short talk of uh, 10 minutes or seven or eight minutes, plus maybe one or two questions for those who would like to ask questions. So the uh, so your, your name is not on the first page, uh, Isabelle. So Isabelle Largillière uh, obtained uh, her PhD two months ago in my group, and she continue as a postdoc, and she will present uh, a contribution, very specific contribution that was uh, recently uh, published in uh, Small. As you know, Small is one of the uh, high impact journals in nanotechnology. And uh, so she did some work on the diffusion of plasma nanoparticles in the viscous uh, environment. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as Michel uh, said, uh, I work on the diffusion of plasma nanoparticle. Um, and the reason I did that is uh, because in my uh, main project, um, uh, I was working to develop a uh, new treatment for the retina, which is based on the laser irradiation of gold nanoparticle for gene delivery. And because uh, we wanted to target the retina tissue, I needed to do the injection of the gold nanoparticle in the vitreous. And for those uh, who, uh, who don't know, like the vitreous is a really uh, viscous uh, medium uh, composed of uh, one principal uh, polymer, which is hyaluronic acid. And so my objective was to better understand the diffusion of this kind of nanoparticles to better plan the injection in order to be able to have the nanoparticles to reach the retina to, uh, to do the treatment. So to do that, I use a device uh, developed in our lab by uh, Sergei Padovsky, uh, which is a side illumination. Um, and thanks to that, I was able to have this kind of video and all the bright dots in this video are the nanoparticles. And from those um, uh, video, I was able to get the uh, displacement of each single nanoparticles, and which is uh, the Brownian motion. And from that, I was able to determine the diffusion coefficient. So I did that for uh, hyaluronic acid um, solution because it's the main component of um, the vitreous, and for gold and silver nanoparticles for a high range of hydrodynamic, hydrodynamic radius and uh, almost two order of magnitude for the macroscopic viscosity. Um, most of you may know the Stokinstein equation, which allows us to determine the diffusion coefficient and which depends on the radius of our particles that we are tracking and the macroscopic viscosity. And thanks to that, we can determine in advance what should be the diffusion coefficient for a large range of radius and viscosity. However, for uh, nanoparticles, it doesn't work. As you can see here with the dots, which are the experimental data, there is a large shift between the um, stock chain uh, data and the experimental one. And it can be explained pretty easily because the macroscopic viscosity is a um, uh, determined at macro scale, not nano scale. And uh, the um, condition to use the Einstein is that the particle we are tracking should be way bigger than the molecule of our solvent dispersion medium. And here it's not the case with our polymer, which is more or less the same size of our nanoparticles. So to um, overcome this issue, people in the literature introduce an effective viscosity. And the question is how we can model this effective viscosity uh, to uh, be able to uh, determine the, to have an equation to determine the diffusion coefficients. So I use in this case the adaptive uh, Higgins model, which is here, and which depends on the solvent viscosity and different um, characters, characteristic parameters of the, of the polymer, such as the correlation length and uh, right, effective radius, which depends on the radius of the nanoparticles, but also the radius of the polymer. And 
From that, we can determine with the experimental data the value of the two parameter fitting parameter K and A. And from that, we managed to have a, a pretty good uh, fitting with the experimental data with uh, only 10 to 20% of error. And if we come back here with this uh, effective viscosity model, which is uh, what is really nice is uh, it allows us to uh, fit the stuck and chain equation for all scales. So here for a very small radius compared to the polynomial one, at the molecular scale, we have a viscosity which is close to the solvent one. Uh, at nanoscale, which is our case, um, we have a highly dependent uh, viscosity with the hydrodynamic radius of our particles. And uh, at macro scale, we come back to the macroscopic viscosity. So this equation allows us to really uh, be able to use the effective viscosity at all scales. Um, then you can see pretty well, but uh, I was interested because of my application for the vitreous to use different uh, coatings for my nanoparticles. Uh, because for biological application, we want to have biocompatibility and sometimes uh, also specificity. So for biocompatibility, I use uh, uh, polyethylene glycol and also hyaluronic acid coatings. And as you can see, it seems that there is um, correlation between the zeta potential of our coatings and the value of the parameter K and A, which um, highlights the electrostatic uh, interaction uh, importance, uh, and we need to take them into account in this model. And also with uh, the specific uh, coating, which is uh, antibody uh, with antibody at the end, because antibody is a way more complex uh, molecule, we don't have only electrostatic interaction, and then it doesn't follow anyone. So it shows that even if this uh, equation works pretty well, we need to take into account and to uh, uh, work still on this uh, equation to take into account all kinds of chemical interaction. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we used a side illumination device, which is cost effective and can be um, adapted to any kind of optical uh, microscope. And it allows us to characterize the diffusion of plasmonic nanoparticles and we can even track every single one. So we can be really like uh, precise. And uh, we have a set of equations that uh, allow us to evaluate with accuracy the diffusion coefficients of nanoparticle and polymeric solutions. And if you want to know more, I'm sorry, you cannot really see it. Um, uh, if you want to know, to, to know more about this work, like there is a, a paper that has just been published in a, a small as uh, Michel said. Thank you.